<laughs> Boom. We are live with my good buddy who's loving me right now, Mr. Mark Shem. Mark, thank you so much uh, for joining us, for hanging out on this Friday. It's a ghost town everywhere with the holidays. Um, but I want to introduce you guys to Mark. Feel free to chime in with any uh, questions as well. I'll let you know a little bit about Mark. So we're in downtown San Jose. Thank you again, Mark, my for pleasure. joining me. He's the man. Very, very cool guy. So, Mark, let's go uh, first. First, I want to give you update you on Mark a little bit and then talk more about giving you guys uh, value. Um, first off, Mark, uh, where'd you go to college, my man? Aggie. I'm not, uh, an Aggie, UC Davis. Nice. Did you grow up here? Or? I'm from the peninsula, actually. What, where exactly? Where, what area of the peninsula? San Mateo? San Mateo, or? Foster City. Oh, nice. nice. I went to Notre Dame, Dana Mer, my freshman year. Are you kind of aware of Belmont, Carlmont? It's a small little castle. Oh, yeah. Of a school. Okay, you are aware of it. Very cool, very cool. And then, uh, where did you, what made you go on and choose uh, UC Davis? You chose political science and. History, which are actually my two my favorite topics. I just I didn't know where to go from it uh, from there. But is that what kind of got you into like, everything I read is about lawyers? Uh, well, when you were growing up in the peninsula back way back when, uh, most Asians went to the math science. <laughs> I didn't care for math or science. Hey, we're, we're Asian technically. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I get it. So The stigma, right? That we're yeah. all good at, at math. And... So I decided to, I, I enjoyed history and poli sci. So that's what I majored in because the best advice I ever got was major in something that you do well in because right. it shows that you can think. Right. No, well said. Well said. That was the only subject I ever got an A in. I just, I never connected the dots on where that would go, right? Or oftentimes our Asian parents have it figured out for us. Well, they want you to be an engineer or oh. want you to be a doctor. If you're not a doctor or a lawyer, you're a failure, right? <laughs> exactly. In their eyes. Did you get that? Perhaps just be honest, just be a little transparent here in your house. So, so you're, uh, Ch you're Chinese, Mr. Shem, I'm Indian, we're all Asian, same thing. Was that the, the total normal thing, first generation? Well, I'm not first first generation, I'm second generation. Okay. But there's still, back then. Doesn't go away. Doesn't go away. <laughs> so, did your parents want to... Uh, I mean, obviously, there's a gap between because there's probably some kids out there who are trying to really figure themselves uh, out. You go right into Davis and you, okay, I'm going to go into law school. Oh, no, I started an econ, okay. but I did not care for that. So right. that's why I went into uh, poli sci and then history. You realize there's so many numbers of all in econ. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, screw this. But you enjoy writing at the same time? It's something that you learn how to get better at. Uh, not everyone's born a great writer. There are very few people who do that. You, right. you learn by practice. You learn by experience. Right. And doing things that are your strength, things you like. Hey, Omar, thank you for joining us. Omar is uh, chief of staff of, uh, of Vice Mayor. Very cool guy. Thank you for joining us. This this stuck out to me, Mr. Shem. Mr. Shem is a, is a firm believer in effective use of written discovery to narrow the issues and achieve early settlement. Now, we're going to get into uh, a lot of stuff, um, but... I really like that. Did you elaborate? Uh, what What do you mean uh, by that? I mean to to really zone in on the effective use of written discovery to know the issues and achieve early settlements. Well, well, sometimes when you you get a client, you you learn you you learn their views, mm -hmm. and sometimes that's not always with what the facts uh, suggest. Mm -hmm. Using discovery like interrogatories, request for admissions, and request for production. You can try to focus the other side to realize their strengths or weaknesses of their case. And with requests for admissions, they come with a penalty if you fail to answer them properly. Mm -hmm. So you could get attorney's fees at the end. So mm -hmm. you're really kind of, you know, you've got a complaint or a big jumbled mess of issues. Mm -hmm. And discovery forces you to get rid of issues that are not supported by the facts. And so right. you can narrow it. Right. And then the goal really should be for them is early settlement. And for those who don't know about early settlement, you mean get, getting the other side to agree early, avoid wasting money by both sides? Well, yes. I'm, 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 we're expensive and litigation is expensive. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're better off settling most cases. Too. Right. And, and still achieving your goals, whatever those may be, hopefully, right? Or avoiding. Anything. Or avoiding litigation. Awesome. Awesome. And not to, to backtrack, uh, but after the Aggie lifestyle, so many Aggies, the sisters and Aggie, I know they're going to be watching this. Then you go to Temple. What is it with the East Coast and all these law schools? They're cousins with the Rutgers. Philly's kind of a, is it a hotbed? I mean, what, 
Well, it, that's relative. It, was an, it could be anywhere. Right? It was an opportunity to go back east and kind of experience it. It's different. Right. I can't really put a really uh, definition of why it's different, but it, it we have do things in the West Coast that are not quite the same on the East Coast, and it was just an mm -hmm. opportunity to experience. And you're tired of smelling the cows in Davis, that too. Well, that too. <laughs> that's my allergies. Oh my God, what is it? That's an, I swear to, uh, to with us Asians, my only kryptonite is pollen. Is uh, in and whenever I go to Davis or go to Tracy, you say visiting my sister, it is what's well, just the wind that blows up the pollen there, right? Were you just miserable like I was during the allergy season? Oh, yeah, oh my god, it's it's, it's nuts. before Claritin. <laughs> and uh, okay, so we go to uh, Temple, uh, awesome experience. Um, we're done at Temple, and then it's the real world. Right. Well, well, tell me about the the bar. Obviously, you had to uh, pass the bar after, and Mr. Shem eventually becomes far more involved um, with the bar association. Um, so, tell me a little bit of that. I know we got some some people who are at the same point finishing up uh, law school um, that follow me. Um, you took the bar exam back home, and what happens next? How, how you get a job. Work? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, when you go get a job, how was that experience for you? Did you have any sites set anywhere in the Bay Area? What made you eventually settle in San Jose? Uh, well, that's where the first job opened up. Okay. And that's where I ended up staying. Okay. But uh, it's always difficult, uh, the, especially now. The economy's tight. Mm -hmm. um, not as many lawyers are retiring, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of new, new ones coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's either um, Henry Clay or, uh, or Jenny Webster who said, the profession can always use another good lawyer. Mm -hmm. And um, just out of curiosity, was this a um, mutual friend or a personal colleague that ended up getting you the first interview, or was it flat out you just selling yourself? Uh, no, actually, it was, a, it, was, it was a friend. I knew it. I knew it's, it. It. It's, it's not See, what you know, it's who you know. Yep, exactly. Absolutely. I say that a lot. And for anybody who's struggling out, out there to get a job, you can sit there and click all day. You know, I had a friend the other day call me but i realize whether you like it or not um nothing is going to happen until a you know somebody on the inside it's a harsh reality or you go out there and you meet people physically right nobody wants to do that i feel these days the kids are really struggling um with that so i feel that that's uh so important right um a lot of jobs are not the ones that are out on craigslist or whatever they uh, put them on Right, right. Um, but let's let's get into the uh, nitty gritty. Um, right, oh, right before we do, uh, for any of the users who are interested or you have any kids that are interested, let's talk about uh, the mock trial uh, experience. I went to San Francisco, kind of a Stanford summer program for one of my nieces, and thought it was uh, very cool. The kids getting a uh, mock trial, essentially. For those of you guys who don't know, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Shem, is essentially it's kind of like a fake trial put on, but they're studying leading up to it, two sides against each other, and then the final essentially is them presenting their cases against each other. Was that kind of a, a somewhat you're, of a summary? You're, you're given a fact a, pattern, you're yeah. given law, case law, you're given law, and you're told to put together a case for and against. So that it requires analytical skills, oral communication skills, obviously writing skills, mm -hmm. and the ability to think on your feet because you have to use the rules of evidence. If you watch the, the courtroom dramas, you see all those attorneys popping up objection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They have to do that. Right. And I think at a young age, it's such a, a cool experience for even situations like this. It's like fight or flight, you freeze up, right? Or you don't. And I, I saw some kids do that, but I think that's not a bad thing to get that out of your system, right? At such a young age and be on that platform. I'm sure some of the kids struggle with that. He's, he's coaching, coach at Lindbergh High Schools, right? right? Team. Awesome. Yeah. But what more importantly, it's forcing you to think uh, outside the normal uh, box that you're raised in in the in the classroom and definitely with oral communication skills even if you don't become a lawyer i had one student who literally became a rocket scientist yeah and enjoys <laughs> making presentations and many of the colleagues the student former student encounters don't know how to make presentations they get right. all nervous you've right. seen it right no yeah there's so many positive things i think even if you become a doctor at the end of the day sometimes the interviews you still got to be at some ability to be able to sell yourself I'll uh, like present your case, and some people struggle with that more and more. But uh, if anybody does want to do that, how, how could they do that? How could they get involved? Well, most schools in our county, Santa Clara, have a program. If not, you should go talk to your principal. 
Awesome. And then uh, Silver Creek, you were helping out there a little bit? Was, were you on a, I guess, academy? Well, a long time ago, Silver Creek was talking about putting together a legal studies academy, focusing on uh, the curriculum with a legal bent. Mm. Um, and I was on that committee to, to advise them on that. Nice. nice. And then um, former president of... Was this the, the Bar Association? Santa Clara County Bar Association. Okay. And what are, what are their real, is it just simply an association a networking thing, or is there actually um, duties, responsibilities that are carried out? Are there things that happen on a case-by-case basis, and then people have to make well, it's an association kids, che- kids cheating on tests? No, oh, we don't go <laughs> This is an association of attorneys and, okay. and with judges, and we put on programming to educate our members. Okay. Uh, social events and when the time comes uh the bar at a, on, on occasion uh makes a, offers an opinion as to uh, certain issues such as the the attempt to recall judge persky they came out okay. against that got it got it so you guys that w- what exactly do you know uh to recall judge uh persky for anybody who doesn't uh know what are we talking about here uh, well there is a movement to recall judge persky to take, get him off the bench because they are not happy with his decision on the sentencing of uh, Brock Turner, who was found guilty. Stanford of rape, case. Yes, the Stanford, known as the Stanford rape case. Interesting, interesting. The, uh, kind of the, the political side of things. Now, California state, uh, explain a few the difference. So we, we got the Supreme Court, and then does California have its own, uh, I guess, essentially type of Supreme Court? Uh, court, excuse my ignorance, but Judge Persky, what, what is he sitting on? What exactly well, is his... We have three branches of government. We okay. have the governor, we have the legislature, and we have the judiciary. Okay. At the top of the judiciary is the Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. Below the Supreme Court is the Court of Appeals. Mm-hmm. And then below that is the Superior Court. Got Judge it. Persky is on the Superior Court bench. California Superior Court. Bench. Right. The general court of... General... General Court of Jurisdiction. Uh, and how many uh, how many are, are typically appointed uh, at a time? It varies uh, from county to county. Okay, got it, got it. And, uh, and and did that end up happening? Did Judge Persky get recalled? They are attempting to put it on the ballot. Okay, okay. So that, would that be this June? I'm not time? sure what I'm timeline sure. they're working on. I'm, gu- I'm guessing it, but interesting, interesting. And you guys made that initial vote. Mr. Shem, to actually get it on there? Well, I wasn't part of the decision-making process. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, get me I'm out retired. of there. No, I'm retired from that. <laughs> but that was but an I example didn't... of the responsibilities. Yes. Got it. Got it. All right. So, so y- Yippee, what's, what's going on? Harleen, thank you guys for joining us. Let's talk uh, value. And I think the overall, I was trying to study what exactly would be on these guys' minds the most. And uh, thankfully, it's one of the things that you specialize in uh, the most – um, sir, and it's. I'm sure you've represented both sides. Any great attorney can debate, even the sides that they don't believe in, right? But that's that, that's what the uh, idea. Don't personally uh, believe in, but um, civil litigation from landlords. Um, what is uh, some advice or, or some things that you've seen that is you know the most common in these cases of civil litigation with landlords? I'm sure you've represented both sides for landlords. And well, primary tenants. landlords. Pri- okay, primarily you've represented. Landlords, is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, okay. And what are some of, uh, you know, probably the most common I guess, conflicts, one could say, um, that you've come across during your times? Uh, oh, there is no common trend. It's uh, all over the it's place. It's all over the place. Case by case basis. But, uh, you know, in San Francisco and in Oakland, you do have habitability issues, especially with the astronomical rents. And mm. people trying, and then with uh, rent control and housing restrictions in the city in particular, there uh-huh. are very stringent rules that sometimes the landlords do not follow, and then there are penalties attached to that. Mm. And then you, you go and you defend these guys. You do. Damn it, Mr. Shen. <laughs> no, you hey, have to defend hey, everybody. You got to defend everybody. Yeah, hey, everyone right? has yeah. a right to a defense. That's right. That's right. Um, so as far as, and for, for people who, who don't know, uh, I guess the controversy is when we look at in the commercial world, I think we're at a cap of you can only increase rent 3% year to year. That is the, the maximum, or does this vary by county, city, correct me if I'm wrong? It depends on each city and county. Okay, got it. Primary city. And, and, and some of this controversy that you're talking about is with landlords, as far as residential is concerned, unless it's affordable housing, there is no real... Uh, well, cap, well, right? There's a there is habitability issues under California law. There, you're entitled to 
several minimum basics such as heat, mm -hmm. roof, mm -hmm. electricity, there are others. And sometimes the landlords don't follow up with that. Oh, so, oh, that's the allegation. Yeah, with the maintenance. That's probably one of the biggest things. Interesting. But if you construct it in a lease in a way that, you know, it's the tenant's job to do something like that, or is that not possible? Uh, well, we have certain code uh, laws in California that uh, limit what a landlord can put in a contract. I've dealt with that in the commercial uh, situation where, you know, they, they signed that, we would have to replace an AC unit that was up above. And AC units are very expensive. Um, and it was clearly written in the lease. I was off playing college basketball. And later I'm like, Mom, Dad, you're telling him to fix the AC. But he clearly said that you're going to be in charge of repairing it. And even so, replacing it. Somebody should have done a better job of, of reviewing that. But in that case, because it's written in the lease, does that necessarily mean that it's also uh, the case? Because they may not have reviewed local... So this is in Sunnyvale, for example. Well, there are differences between commercial and residential. Uh, with okay. residential in particular, it cannot violate public policy. Oh, okay. And that would be a case-by-case -case basis. Got it. Got it. And uh, so the the habitat type thing. So, for example, for those who are in San Jose, uh, San Jose or Santa Clara County, you, you, we're, we're off the top of their heads, the general, um, you know, for, for even for landlords out there, are necessities that they should at least have to... I guess have their tenants uh, be routinely maintaining things. Um, well, again, the California law requires some minimal requirements. So you have to have running water. You got to have electricity. You got to add the heat. You have to have the roof. And I know, you know, with all the properties, that becomes a challenge. But mm. you have to do that. Yep, and then they have property managers and stuff like that. So if anybody who's who's struggling to get the attention of someone, uh, aside from calling you, if property managers delaying and delaying and not fixing something. Um, what is one thing that you recommend they do, you know, aside from calling you if they can't afford you? Document. Document. Right. Everything in writing. And I've been told, uh, hey, Mark, um, everything in writing, get them to respond in writing. But would you agree that, that video is more powerful than uh, photos? Because obviously in the, within the file, they have more specifically time, metadata. Um, would you recommend? Well, now you're getting into the area of electronic discovery and electronics and how you know, you maintain that data, but you know, however you document it, document it, but document it, <laughs> not just word of trying to give value to these people. Uh, but yeah, document it as you go, exactly what's happening, be as specific as possible, which people sometimes uh, fail to do. Right. Oh yeah. Um, so at, uh, runner's right. So this is a kind of a, uh, a controversial topic. When we go into the world of affordable housing, right? I, I guess it was a section Eight, you can call it, uh, or did I just make that up? When we have well, there are government programs that provide uh, subsidies okay. for low-income residents. Got it. And I've been here about. There, I don't know if you heard about that recently. That a lot of elderly were also getting kicked out and having to find new homes during the holidays. Um, I was asked if there was some type of agency that's usually required to move these movers or help them move. Uh, into places. Have you heard of that at all? Well, there are various programs out there, county and state and federal, uh, that people can go to to see if they can if they qualify for assistance. Okay, got it. And uh, by assistance, you mean they they get assistance for the move for these type of things? Uh, well, usually it's finding housing if they qualify, things mm. like that. Got it. I think by qualify they they, they can't make X amount more a year, right? Generally speaking. Got it. Got it. Um, so what else have you uh, generally done, Mark? I know aside from uh, personal injury, there's a lot of uh, construction. Oh, a lot of construction going on in the Inland Bay Area, as you know. Mm -hmm. Houses, people are flipping them uh, yeah. and then selling them, and sometimes there are issues that arise there. Okay. And just um, uh, for example, so this is obviously people, investors, real estate investors, uh, when they're rehabbing things, things not being uh, to to code, um, not done issue. to code, not done properly. Sometimes the, the the investor runs out of money, and so they have to start cutting back on expenses, and that sometimes leads to problems. Mm. Uh, and then when you go out to sell the house, you got, you've got your disclosures, as mm. you were well, well aware, and mm -hmm. so there's all sorts of problems that crop up, or a contractor, a subcontractor is not paid, and they leave the house 
Jeez. Jeez. Uh, that leads me to, to my next question is um, for anybody out there whose mom or dad is thinking about buying some land or let alone a property to try to rehab uh, themselves, what are some very basic, basic uh, things? And again, we, we must assume that not everyone knows everything who's uh, watching this. A due diligence, you would call it, right? Um, you know, we won't name our client, but the bottom line is at the end of the day, um, um, he or she should have done a better job of due diligence, right? And and thoroughly check looking. the title. Make yes. sure you know what the title has on it. Does it have easements? Does it have encroachments on the property? Mm -hmm. uh, if you're buying a pre-built structure, inspect it. Mm -hmm. Don't just Leas pendis means litigation. By the way, <laughs> if you're going by themselves to check it out, right at the at the county, so restrictions. Those type of things, right? But some would argue, well, a title company is going to do that for me, anyways. I heard someone well, do know, that. Some, Not always. Well, they'll do it, but sometimes they may miss something. Right. You never know. Right. So, but do check, and then you know, don't just hire. Uh, and if they do miss something, then they're, then they're going to say, "Hey, it wasn't my fault." And then you know, then you're down the path of possible litigation, and that's never fun. Right, right. So, um, so when Mark says check the title, he means uh, whatever county, uh, respective county that you're in, you can go down. Uh, it's the county clerk, clerk's office, right? Records, uh, recorder, clerk's office. Mm -hmm, yes. mm -hmm. That sounds very basic, but this is important. Is um, obviously that property is going to come with an assessor's parcel number or APN, and that's what one of the ways you would use to kind of track. Uh, this land and search for it and be able to see uh, oftentimes um, they don't allow you to do that online or purchase copies it's kind of a, a process so you'd have to physically go in there but trust me if you're investing in something this huge it's, it's more than important that you take your time with uh, due diligence uh, Mark how do you feel about going into an agreement that has t some time of, of time strain on it I just thought of something. Would you agree? Recommend that you know if you're ever going into a contract and somebody says, "Hey, you can get it if you do it in X, 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 and X amount of time," or the deal's off. Obviously, that's not something that you would favor, right? Because there's so many things that are out of your uh, well. If that's control. part of the deal, uh, unless it's against public policy, right? It's 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 it's, it's part it's of okay. The, it's okay, and. Unless, and the no, thing unless is, it's against public policy, I, you know, you're speaking generalities and sure can't offer sure. advice on that. Well, I would recommend negotiate better and try to avoid from the time if it's something you want, right? Right. Uh, if not, you could always walk away. Hey, Kelly, got another uh, attorney. Kelly uh, is on. Thank you for, for joining us. Um, what about, uh, let's talk about mortgage uh, lending laws. These don't exactly have to do with you, Mark. They're more regulated, you know, on a federal level. Just wanted to get your personal opinions that since 2008, we obviously had a lot more, hopefully a lot more laws that kind of uh, came into place as far as housing is concerned. Uh, what were your, your, your thoughts on generally on, on banks and how they reacted towards uh, housing and giving out predatory loans. Do you see this cycle repeating itself? Well, I mean, I, I think I'll stay out of that. Mark, Mark's views are his own. Uh, Mark's views are his own. I knew I was going to get this, but I had to uh, try with that. So uh, what, what else, Mark, uh, as far as defect claims? Does that have to do exactly with, with contractors and goes back to construction? Yeah, it goes back to construction and contractors. Got it. You got it. And um, uh, easements. So if we can, oh, here, how about this? I did see this come up was uh, HOA. Um, this has kind of been, you know, a topic of people. People, it's hard to find see homes without HOA laws these days, right? Well, you know, all these multifamily residential complexes that are cropping up, have been cropping up, they have HOAs. And you, yeah. you have to pay their assessments. If you don't mind that, because it's generally cheaper than buying a single family residence, it comes up with its upsides and downsides. And some downsides? Well, you could have an HOA board that's doing things that you don't agree with, and you can get into disputes with them. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get assessments that you don't like paying, and you have to pay them. Right. And essentially, uh, why do you think the HOA in that kind of legal loophole was created that with the homeowners association are they completely within 
uh, the law obviously would be relative to where it is at to be able to make their own rules as an HOR. Well, I, there isn't a loophole. It's created by by the legislature. It's, mm. it's, a, it's a special um, uh, entity that has it, a special corporation, and it's an entity, and it has the power to make rules. It's governed by the uh, by uh, rule, rules and laws, so mm -hmm. they can't just do anything that they want to do. Okay, got it. So, so if someone felt that something with the HOA was, um, you know, out of line, uh, what, what would they or not? Leave well, if, if you're really interested, you need to attend your meetings mm -hmm. and voice your opinions on the subject. Hundred percent. They yeah. have to. Uh, the board has to present agendas before the meetings. So if that's an issue that you're interested in, you mm -hmm. need to go and attend. Yeah, I've, or get involved on the board. I've I've given these same exact advice, and then and just as quick as they made these rules, it's, it's just as quick as they can change them too. But people don't understand is they complain and complain, but then they won't show up to these meetings. They don't vote. They don't do anything. Well, and, and, then you have yes. Yes, and they don't understand how big their influence actually is if they just get a group of three to four neighbors who are also there to just show up. Um, because essentially, some of these HOA uh, boards are, I'm not sure if it works that way, but uh, are they voted upon or they just, whoever's in the homeowners association? No, so. you, vote, you put your name in nomination. You remember in student government back in school? Which is exactly why they will care, <laughs> right? When three or four people show up and uh, they see that it can persuade uh, people a lot more. So I've even gone down to City Hall sometimes. I said this with Sylvia recently is people will go to Facebook and complain and complain, and then I'll go to the actual city hall hearing on it, and it's a ghost town, right? right? And that makes them makes it so easy for them to do um, uh, whatever they want. But uh, that's essentially what I wanted to talk about, people. And I feel like we nailed that uh, question. But uh, essentially, HOA does have. Do they have the power to evict you as well if you break certain rules? They can't evict you. You're a part owner. They can just keep tagging. They you. can take you to court to recover the amount you owe. Mm. And if you're not, if you're not aware of their rules. I mean, we've seen little stuff. I heard people that my satellite is on the wrong side, so my neighbor complains out to me, and now I'm getting, uh, you know, uh, notices on my door to move satellite. Well, if it's well, when you moved in, you were usually given the bylaws, the CCNRs. And any other rules that the board has promulgated, you need to look at them. Right. Don't just stick them in a folder and say, oh, okay, I own a unit now. Yay. Right. And then if the neighbors have to abide by this too, obviously they're they're going to be quick to, to rat you out if you're not abiding by them. As well, well, yeah. well, most most developments do retain a property manager, professional property manager, and mm -hmm. they know how to, they know the rules and they you need to work with them. Right. Totally agree. Um Talk about due diligence uh, on land. Uh, what other should you be looking for if, say, aside from residential, we're looking at commercial for a, a second. Uh, Judge Schmoe's finally wants to invest all his money to buy this land. Aside from checking with the um, title is clean off the top of my head, from any personal value I could give you, is depending on what you want to do, uh, you want to assess if there's running water. Right, or if there's water nearby, or whether that's going to be have to be, I'm sure that can be led yourself, but it's going to be much more expensive, right? Would you agree? Utilities you want to look for well, that, of course, as well. And um, I've always been told Melrose, Melrose School District, or Melrose, if it, it's something within Melrose, it's a far bigger tax that's placed. Uh, on well, you don't have being, much choice over that, it's right. So, what is that for people who have no idea? Does that mean you're just within a, a school district? Um, I, I'd, I'd have to look that up. Okay, no, it's okay to to, to not know, but um, I uh, can't I, know everything. Yeah, no, 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 that's uh, totally all right. Uh, but it would, uh, I believe, uh, and quote me if I'm wrong. That's the beauty of this. I believe it's a uh, a school district tax that you want to look out for. But I'll follow up on that. That's the cool part of this. And and don't worry, Mark. People have no problem correcting us and no problem to sending me messages. Of, Actually, it's this and that and that. Um, but so st b bankruptcy laws uh, again has very. Have you ever dealt with anything that had to do with bankruptcy laws? I I am not a bankruptcy specialist. I mean, People just go that. right into that niche, right? There's so many. Well, so, it's, it's a different. It has different rules. Got it. And I I don't practice in bankruptcy. But from a general level, how can one protect himself? We've had Fred on the show. We've talked about. Uh, trust and and the different you know legal shields of that 
Um, if Mark Shem was doing something, as I would refer it out to someone <laughs> who knows how to do. Good answer. Doing. Good answer. Uh, and and so so you would refer someone out to know the right entities of an LLC and an S corporation. Well, if you're dealing with bankruptcy, you I would talk to one of my colleagues who does bankruptcy. Right, and uh, to prevent yourself from that, uh, there are several ways. Check out the episode with. Uh, with Fred, we talk about them and cover them tremendously. Um, statute of limitations. You, I, and Fred sat uh, and, and over a client. The first thing he asked you was, "What are the statute of limitations on that?" Um, I, I know this sounds very boring and dumb, but again, we have to assume people don't know uh, anything. From the most basic level, the statute of limitations is your time period in which you can file a claim in the court mm -hmm. to adjudicate your rights. And in other words, if you, for example, you get in a car accident, mm -hmm. you can't wait forever to file a lawsuit. You have to do it uh, with a car accident, for example, two years. And depending on that, I was doing a, a little homework on articles uh, within uh, the Table of Contents for um, California. Um, we talked about the Supreme uh, Court. And are these articles just within penal code, right? Or am the I... statute of limitations in the code of, is in the code of civil procedure. Got it. And uh, and usually those that can be a ballpark of from one year, what we just talked about, all the way to ten years, right? It varies. It varies in depending on subject, and that's something. Uh, is that information readily available that people can? Everything's available online, but you got to be careful what you read. Right, that it's not outdated or things have not right. changed. And consult a lawyer. How do you stay up to date? We get the code books. Ah, okay. You, you just get the code books. And, and we have a, a continuing legal education requirement. So. Interesting. Tell me about that. What, what? Attorneys have to have, take so many units of uh, uh, in their practice area and then on ethics, uh, substance abuse, and elimination bias. And after a certain amount of time, you guys have to do that again to keep your license? Every three years. Every three years. Interesting. Don't uh, you have one? Um, yes. After two years... Uh, I'm assuming if I want to be a realtor and I'm a part of the National uh, Association of Realtors and the California Association of Realtors, then there are certain things that, yes, I do have to do. Um, after Same the, concept. Yeah. After these two years to become a broker, there's going to be a completely different, much tougher exam. Um, and as far as thereafter, um, I'm not quite sure, but there should be. I'm totally okay with that, right? I welcome the knowledge, and we should always be um, trying to stay up to date on things. I think that's uh, essential. It shouldn't be looked at as a as a burden, right? Um, so this is a tough question that probably drove you uh, nuts, but almost a silly question. But um, as far as all of the penal penal codes, I wanted to kind of was trying to dive and focus on okay, well, well which are specifically related to real estate, but that is so situational and so many volumes. They they're all going to be tied in somehow at some point, right? That's very vague. Well, that, that, that is a vague question, Roman. Right. Uh, you, you, I I can't deal with vague. Questions. Right. Yeah, he hated it. He was just about it. So foreclosure again. That's another niche that. They'd have to be they have Talk a, to a criminal defense lawyer. Yeah, and they, 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 they have a specific attorney here who deals with just with ADA, right? So don't get me started with that. Stay up to your ADA laws. They're always changing in California, especially if you're a business owner, right? There's certain oh, people yes. who specifically are, are targeting um, others that in older buildings, especially that aren't you know up to uh, to code date, compliant, aren't yes. code compliant on that. And there's um, there's, a, there's a lot of backlash for that. Um, as well, um, uh, unlawful uh, detainers and uh, evictions. How can one know that they've been, uh, you know, uh, unlawfully uh, evicted or feel that um, they have for no uh, apparent reason been kicked out? That, that's kind of the controversy with the whole San Mateo thing is that if my question is if a landlord comes to you overnight, jacks up your rent you know, doubles it, triples it, and essentially you have no choice but to leave. You've been there 15, um, 20 years. Um, do you just again, leave? That be, How do you know that it hasn't again, fell that, out of public policy? Again, you have to look at the local the local municipal rules. Some have rent controls, some don't. Uh, you have to look at what they're doing. It's, you know, speaking in generalities. Mm -hmm. it, city may by not city. Be. It's city by city and also what the landlord is attempting to do. 
mm-hmm. which may or may not violate a state law or even a local law. Do you feel uh, uh, personally that there there should be the way we have a cap on commercial for three percent that there should be in residential, or do you think a survival of the fittest? Uh, well, that, that, lawyers that's really, hate that's, giving personal opinions. That's really that's outside the, the realm of my opinions. <laughs> True, the law is the law, and that is the purpose of it: is to get rid of opinions. Talk right? to your lawmakers. Right, right, and and kind of if you feel that's the case, you'd recommend talk to your lawmakers, your decision makers, city council. Right, that's what they're there for. Right, right. I think um, this is uh, gonna gonna be kind of the future of a lot of the talk in San Jose. Right, as it becomes less and less, um, I guess, uh, affordable. One would say is how how we're going to control that, or we simply need to build more, right? Um, Where you build is going to be a big issue, right? Especially down in San Jose. Well, um, fun. Now we get to go into the the personal questions with uh, with Mark. Uh, Mark, I want to know, and yes, this has nothing to do with law, so you don't have to give me trial answers. Which it's always in this case, less is more. Right? Uh, say, stay silent. I always say less than necessary. Mark's very good at that. Um, I, on the other hand, blab all day. I'd probably get myself in trouble more, which is why I'm, I'm going to need Mark. But, uh, Mark, my first question is uh, what was a, uh, a, a failure, or what you thought was an apparent failure at the time that really set you up later for success? Is there anything you can think of which, you know, in the moment in time, uh, you thought it was a failure, but looking back, it was meant to be. It was exactly what you needed to happen uh, uh, in your life. Can you think uh, of any? Off that sounds like head? an in-job interview here. <laughs> no, I can't actually. I, I'm perfect. Yeah. There aren't there aren't any failures at all. You know, I'll, econ I'll, would be econ. Would be. All failures always have a a a, a, a a silver lining. Silver lining. Yes, it depends what you take out of it. Right, right. And can you you think uh, of of one if, if you would have continued on to econ, you would have never been sitting here, right? I would have been realize, bored silly. Huh? I would have been bored silly. You'd have been bored silly and unhappy. Um, here's uh, another one. Okay, how about this, Mark? One you can actually answer. What's uh, what's a book you'd give most commonly as a gift? I usually one? buy books for myself. <laughs> I don't oh, give right. books as a gift. <laughs> You've never given a, a book as a gift, Mark. Jesus, Jesus. I'm going to get you a, a, a book now. Okay, how about this? Some uh, obsessions you like to explore on the weekends outside of suing people. Uh, oh, I defend people. <laughs> oh, you I, defend like, people. I like to okay. travel. I go like Chicago or New York for the weekend. Nice, nice, nice. Just specifically domestic? You got anywhere international? Uh, I do like to go to London. Okay. What is it about London? Well, if, if you're bored of life, then <laughs> if you find uh, what was the quote from Winston Churchill, if uh, if you find London boring, then you're bored of life. I mean, it, <laughs> it covers so many centuries of history, and then hordes of different cultures, Eastern right. European, Indian subcontinent. Right, right, right. huge, huge. Uh, Indian curry shops are more prevalent than chip and chip, 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 sh- fish and chips. Fish and chips. <laughs> yeah, no, the UK. Uh, Huge, especially with the, with, in the Sikh community, you know, there's a huge influx. I guess when they colonized India, and they actually uh, left, brought a lot of uh, British soldiers. And we were talking about how uh, they were the, fr- the first of the police to create the bulletproof uh, turban. Um, and the Queen is guarded by two Sikh uh, bodyguards uh, as well. So huge community um, there. Um, what are the uh, lots of Chinese in London? We know you guys are in San Francisco. There, 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 All there, the, there's, there's, <laughs> well, of course, it's Hong Kong. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, Hong Kong, they didn't leave Hong Kong until like 98? 97. 97. See, he's a history buff. That's his button I need to get more is to the, the history. All right, let's see if he'll answer. Uh, one more question. Yes, one more question. Okay, you're a quote nerd uh, by me. Uh, the tell-all, be-all of quotes. Um What's a quote that uh, you, you feel that you live your life by or uh, think of often? We all have them. Right? Uh, I'll share mine. Calvin Coolidge's persistence. Keep quote, calm and that. carry on. Keep calm and carry on. Yep, this too shall pass, right? Uh, all right, Mark, you get in a time machine and uh, you go back, you see your 25, 30-year-old self. You're only allowed to 
uh, you only have so much time. You got 30 seconds to a minute to tell your 30 year old self something before you got to hop back in and you're back at this chair. Uh, what advice would you give to yourself? It all works out in the end. I love it. I love it. Um, and we're there. We're the, they're the last two, so you're not running uh, oh, I told you one anymore. More question. You're, That's it. <laughs> you're not running anymore. Gotta go. But, but, uh, but uh, okay, one last one, Mark. One last one. Uh, if do you have any uh, uh, request? Uh, oh, this is a good legal one. You're gonna hate. Uh, what do you believe is true, even though you can't prove it? Oh, that's such a good legal because you can't prove it. Are you, are you, would you consider yourself agnostic? Do you believe in, in, in God or are you do not believe in God? Or that would be an example of something that is not essentially there. But well, I'll um, go with that answer. Prove. Then <laughs> karma, none of that, none of that. Okay. I'll go with your answer. Okay, great. Uh, where can we find you, Mark? Any requests for uh, how do we get a hold of you? If anybody would like your services or would like, um, we're at bornmcchrini uh, com. Our phone number is 408-535-0870. Awesome. Well, Mark, thank you for putting up with my uh, – putting your feet to the fire. Um, I will uh, give you guys some more – throw in a link or some way that you can uh, reach uh, Mark. Um, if there's anything else you want to ask him, I'll make sure I uh, have you guys uh, a direct contact to reach out to him. But thank you so much, Mark, for doing this. Thank holidays, you. Last minute. This is your version of your mock trial. Uh, but uh, when's the next uh, Lindbrook? If we could ever check it out, there's a platform to check it out too, right? Well, when Lindbrook actually goes, does the mock trial, where does it the take place? The county competition starts January 23rd in downtown Superior Court. Nice. It's open to the public. Is it tournament style or something? How does it work? It's just it's trials inside the court. Okay, and Lindbrook, they either win or they lose. That's the way it works. Well, there's four them. preliminary rounds and then there is a single preliminary. There is a tournament style. Yes. Okay, awesome. Right. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate you, sir. You're awesome. Thank you. Thanks, man. Cheers, guys. Take care.